Creepy Tech Podcast. Hello again, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Creepy Tech Podcast. My name is Lydia Shampole, and I'm so excited to share another interesting yet creepy tech that's changing not only the way that we behave but also our perceptions on what we believe is real. This week, we are going to do a deep dive into directional audio spotlighting technology. And yeah, that is kind of a mouthful, but <laughs> it, it's pretty interesting. So um, we're going to discuss what this tech is, how it's being used, and how it may affect us moving forward. Now, considering that there are a few different companies who are developing this technology, I will just be focusing on the biggest players in the audio industry. And I'm guessing that most of you haven't heard about this yet, but I'm sure that if you're here, then you must be intrigued to find out. So let's begin with the most recent company making waves in the news. And this would be Holosonic Research Labs Incorporated. Holosonic is a company founded by Dr. F. Joseph Pompey, who was a graduate of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Most recently, Holosonics demonstrated their technology at, at the 2019 Consumer Electronics Show, which is usually referred to as CES. But the company has been around since the early 2000s, and they offer a range of different audio spotlight products. The company manufactures and installs highly directional audio spotlight speaker systems. If you've had a chance to look up their YouTube videos showing quick demonstrations of their systems, probably link in the show notes, which is going to be on the blog, so lshampoli.com, maybe you were a little bit confused. How do their speakers differ from regular speakers? Well, Holosonic speakers use ultrasound technology to create sound at very narrow beams, like a light beam, so typically around like five degrees or so, and the sounds emitted by these speakers are so targeted that it can almost be described as a 3D sound, which makes the messages sound like they're coming from literally inside your own head. So basically like your inner voice, but it's not yours. I first heard about Holosonics from a long spiraling rabbit hole search on Wikipedia. I began the search on Google after watching some documentary on Netflix about the evolution of terms of service agreements of companies like, let's say, Instagram or Facebook or PayPal, those kinds of companies, and quickly ended up stunned by the concept of targeted sound. Some individuals and the founder of the company have described this sound as, quote unquote, messages from your own conscience that no one else can hear which in my opinion is super creepy. Picture this, you're walking through a grocery store and there's a display of bananas, which is what is shown on that YouTube video I mentioned earlier. And all of a sudden you hear your mind telling you, hi, you can hear me, can't you? You're the only one, look around, no one else can. You know who I am? I'm your inner voice. Now I want to talk to you about something, something really important, fair trade, look at them. All those bananas in front of you, so many to choose from. Which should you buy? I know, and you do too. They're all good bananas, but they're the only fair trade ones. So now you know which ones to choose. Make a good choice. You weren't even in the store looking for or wanting to buy bananas in the first place. So where's this voice coming from? And why do you all of a sudden feel the urge to buy a whole bunch of bananas? I have to add that in this specific scenario and the YouTube video that the company created, uh, they clearly labeled that they were advertising for bananas with a big painted yellow dot on the ground where the customer had to stand to hear the ad. But not all companies are so obvious about their use of this technology. And this is the creepiest part of the Holosonics audio spotlighting technology. It's seamless and so targeted that only you can hear it if you're in the range. Not only that, but due to the lack of regulation on this technology, companies don't even have to notify you that they're using this tech to influence you to make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis that benefit them. Oh, and you can be sure that huge companies are more than excited to get their hands on this new method of advertising. 
They no longer have to spend money on printed ads in magazines, internet sites, or strategically placing displays in stores. All they have to do is buy a speaker that literally places a thought into your mind. In yet another case, the television company A&E used this directional audio to advertise one of their TV shows on the streets of New York City. And this is more than a decade ago. In an article written by Andrew Hamp, which I've linked on the website, on adage.com, he describes the experience of a young woman walking on the street minding her own business when the following occurs. Quote, New Yorker Allison Wilson was walking down Prince Street in Soho last week when she heard a woman's voice right in her ear asking, Who's there? Who's there? She looked around to find no one in her immediate surroundings. Then the voice said, it's not your imagination, unquote. The voice was not hers, but it also for sure wasn't just her imagination. She wasn't going crazy. It was an ad for Paranormal State, which was a ghost stories themed television series that a and &E was advertising the premiere of its first episode on December 10th, 2007. According to Andrew Hamp's article, the creator of the technology used by Annie for that advertisement, explained that the intent of the directional audio tech is to quote-unquote spare other people, meaning that he basically believes that by lessening the use of regular loudspeakers and reducing noise pollution, the technology may actually benefit human beings in the long run by avoiding annoying large groups of people. In my opinion, that's one spin you could put on this specific technology. But I'd also have to argue that companies should at the very least be required to use this technology to advertise responsibly. This technology can have some serious impact on our mental health, especially for those that are just barely holding on to reality as it is. Who would have thought that the idea behind the movie Inception could actually become a part of our reality? Better yet, Holosonics isn't the only company staking its claim on this technology either. Sony's European business division has been working on the tech since the early 2000s as well and thinks that this will be a billion dollar tech idea slash product, which will completely change the audio and advertising industries. Other notable companies that are actively investing in this tech also include number one, American Technology, which is now called LRAD Corporation. Number two would be XMOS and number three would be Panphonics. While scouring the websites of these companies, their true intention becomes incredibly clear and very quickly. Under the directional audio tab on the Panphonics website, the following quote dove into the motivation behind the development of this technology. Quote, with traditional speakers, the most common solution to all problems is often to play them louder. Humans will not react to sound volume, but become numb very quickly to any sound level that maintains the same. With directional audio, the idea is to create changes in volume levels around the area. To create a reaction in a person's behavior, you need to create an environment where the sound levels vary and surprise the person with volume, content, and direction. Unquote. This leads us to note that these companies know that the effectiveness of their current methods of advertising are simply not performing because we as human beings have learned to tune them out. So their only solution at this point is to take that option away from us by directly putting their adverts inside our own minds. They want to become our new biased subconscious voice. No longer will we have the option of looking away from a billboard on the street or simply turning up our headphones on the subway, which is insane. The following quote further emphasizes their focus on influencing not only our thoughts, but also where we look and when. The Panphonics website further states, quote, A person can focus only to one audio source at a time. It is possible with directional audio to occupy a person's interest to selected audio in a precise position, even make them stop and turn their head to the desired direction, unquote. There's so many things wrong with this that I would need a full 24 hour long podcast episode just to begin addressing them. I'm sure that many of you would bring up the point that this has been the intention of large companies since the beginning of time. And I would argue that at least with television, radio, billboards, and social media advertisements, we still have the ability to switch off, turn away, or scroll through the advertisements and establish control over our own choices. Additionally, I'd argue that at least with regular advertisements, there is some sort of control or, or legal guidelines that they are required to adhere to. For instance, in Europe, 
companies are not allowed to advertise their products falsely to consumers due to the nature of the regular means of advertising. It's clear to the customer which posts or segments of television shows are part of the content and which parts are the advertisements themselves. There is a clear division between creative content and the content that is intended to be an advertisement. Even Instagram, which I'm going to cover later this season, has begun to require that any post that is being sponsored must alert other users clearly, whether through a statement on the post or linking to the company via their partnerships program. My question for these regulating companies are endless, but my top four questions are the following. Number one, will they begin regulating this new technology and how do they intend to assure that these companies follow the law? Number two, Will companies have to begin their subconscious advertisements by clearly introducing themselves and letting each individual know that an advertisement is beginning? Number three, will they require companies to provide a method to individuals to opt out of their advertisements at any point during? And number four, how do they intend to collect evidence and prosecute companies which actively and consistently create advertisements that creatively skirt those laws? What I do know for sure is that, at this moment, through all my research, I have yet to find even one piece that covers the idea of regulating this specific type of technology. Surely there must be something out there in terms of discussions among ethics boards or something like that that I'm not aware of. But in my opinion, companies creating technology that could have extreme consequences on human behavior should be required to report to an unbiased ethics board where they discuss and formulate a clear-cut set of regulations for their specific technology. One must wonder, if an individual now has no ability to control what ads they listen to, are the companies manufacturing or using this technology crossing the line and taking away our rights to autonomy over our own bodies and decisions? If this technology becomes widely used, do we now have to start second-guessing which thoughts are our own or if they're placed into our minds by companies like 7-Eleven or T-Mobile, which are two of the larger companies that are already using this technology in their stores? We must begin asking ourselves, what price tag do we put on our attention? or worse yet, our own sanity. And in the cases of our mental health and our financial decisions, can we really afford to take the chance by giving Holosonics and other companies making and using directional audio full unregulated control over us? I don't think I can, nor do I want to. Do you? All right, that's all I have for you this week, and I truly hope that you found this interesting. As always, if you have any strange or creepy stories about your interaction with a tech company, gadget, or app, or any other tech-related things, we would love to hear it. You can send your audio clip or story to wyn at lchampole.com. You can find the Creepy Tech Podcast and me, Lydia Champole, on Instagram at tech underscore creepy and on Twitter at tech creepy and at my website elshampole.com if you enjoyed this episode please consider rating and subscribing to let me know it definitely makes my day knowing that there's someone out there interested in the same things that i am creepy tech podcast